take the boat to the other side and wait. There's two bulls coming right down the top of the hill. The first one's definitely a shooter. Hi, Guy Eastman here for Eastman's Bow Hunting Journal and Eastman's Hunting TV. Today we're headed north on a bow hunt for Quebec Labrador caribou. We're going to be tagging along with the Eastman's editorial department's Adam Bender as he looks for a trophy caribou with his bow and arrow. We're going to be going along with our good friend Mike Cantrell from Safari Nordique. We've done this hunt a lot in the past and it's always a good time. So let's go catch up with Adam as he's at the airport in Billings with the Botex all packed up and ready for the trek north. It's a long ways from Billings, Montana to the Arctic Circle where our caribou camp is and it's going to take us a whole day and a half inside the airline system to get there. We had a, uh, a minor explosion in the airport. I uh, did not have TSA approved bottles and uh, we got to Montreal and all of my stuff is covered in head and shoulders. <laughs> so, I hope caribou don't mind the uh, smell of uh, fresh scent conditioner slash shampoo. Like I said, if that's the only thing that happened, we're, uh, we'll be just fine. You know, this is Adam's first trip out to the tundra, and he sets eyes on this beaver on floats, and he's starting to get a little bit nervous. But it's Adam's lucky day. Our pilot is Johnny May, who has more hours out in the bush than anyone I know and possibly anyone on the planet. Johnny is one of the most experienced bush pilots in the world. He has over 36,000 hours in a bush plane out in the tundra. That's incredible. If you do the math, you would have to fly eight hours a day, 365 days a year for 12 years straight to have that many hours. Johnny certainly knows his stuff and we're in good hands on this trip. This week, the Eastman's crew is hunting caribou in the Arctic. It's taken us two days to get to camp, but we're finally settled in and ready to head out on the tundra and see if we can find some bulls. You know you're hunting in the tundra when you have to put on and take off your rain gear 10 times every day. These rainstorms are coming in and out, but it's not slowing down the caribou any, and Adam's getting right in the mix. This is only the first day of the hunt, and this is the first bull caribou Adam's ever seen. I had to talk him out of shooting it, but hopefully, I'm not going to regret that later.
one shot. Go find some more, I guess. It's the end of August, and these caribou are just starting to migrate. They're moving around pretty good today, and it doesn't take very long for Adam and I to locate some more bulls headed our way. So we're gonna head down to this crossing, set up, and hope a big bull walks right past us. We weren't there long, and this bull showed up. He looked good from a distance, but once he got up close, I found myself having to talk Adam out of shooting another bull. If you look really close, you notice he doesn't have any shovels and he's not the type of bull we want to shoot. So Adam and I decide to let him pass and go right on by. It's the end of August and the Eastman crew is bow hunting trophy caribou up north near the Arctic Circle in northern Quebec. Adam and I are seeing a lot of caribou activity on our side of the valley. We've passed up on a few bulls. Let's go check in with Ike and Fred on the other side of the valley and see how things are going over there. Now here comes a bull that has seen a person before. You notice folks, if you look real close, it's that same bull that doesn't have any shovels. He walked right past Adam and I only two hours earlier, and now he's over on Ike's side of the valley. Let's see if he can make it through a second ambush unscathed. Well guys, uh, <laughs> that, those caribou got within about 15 yards of us and uh, I was ready to sling an arrow, I'm still shaking. I was ready to, to fling an arrow but he got up closer and closer and one thing I never noticed until he got 15 yards is he doesn't have a shovel. So I let him go, um, but that was fun, that was, a, that was a blast. We were just glass along, there's a whole bunch of caribou coming on that side of us and, and uh, somebody happened to turn around, I think it was Fred, turned around and said, hey, uh, there's two bulls over here. So, uh, put a stock on it. Didn't work, but that's all right. This is, this is a blast. I'm still shaking. Let's go catch up with Adam as his guide Robert points him in the right direction to sit in the boulders on a heavily used crossing in the bend in this river. Do we see bender? There's one just got out of the water. Right there. Okay, We're gonna go across. Would you want to stay on this side because of the wind? I don't know. They'll flare you just like that one did. Oh. Wait till they get in the water and then they're committed. Right, Robert? Yep. And, and the wind's a whole in bunch your favor. right there. Okay. Crossing. Plans to take the boat to the other side and I'll get up in off. those rocks and wait.
He's down. He's down. Right there. Just smoked him. Right behind the shoulder. He 50 yards from where we were. I ranged that last rock at 20 yards. He came walking past, five more yards past it, stopped him, let her go, just center punch both lungs. Let's go take a look at him. Good bull. Good bull. Yeah, I, I seen when I when it hit right behind that shoulder, it went right through him so fast. Good archery bull. Nice back scratchers for, for as big a bull as he is, you know, having four inch back scratchers. But pretty pretty palmated tops. Couldn't be happier. Just a great bull with a with a bow. Good tops, good back scratchers. But uh, for a first bull with a bow, I'm pretty happy. Just how it all worked out. He he stuck to the script from start to finish and and everything went according to plan, so can't say that happens very much. Well, folks, we hope you enjoyed this week's show. Remember, fair chase is the only way to hunt and take trophy big game. We'll see you right here next week on Eastman's Hunting TV.